Bye-bye. Mm. Well, it's nice to see you back. I wish I could say it's good to be back. Isn't it? I don't know yet. It'll depend. On what? I know perfectly well whether my folks will have me. Oh, of course they will. And how they behave towards me. Uh, have you brought the baby? No. How's Marion? Fine. Nice to saw her. Like that, is it? Sort of. All over and done with, eh? Afraid so. Hey, can I take your bags? No, no. It's all right. I'll manage. Oh. Anyway, the son, I'm waiting to see you. Well, that's smashing. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. No, no, no. Oh, um, Mr. Cochran, could I have a word, please? Certainly. Would you care for some coffee? Thank you. Could we have another cup, please? Certainly, Mr. Watson. I was uh, sort of in the lookout for you. You were out early. Oh, I was taking Marion to Glendarroch to say goodbye to Jimmy Blair. Oh, I thought she wasn't going to do that. You're very well informed. Ah, well, I've found it useful to be so in the past. In business, you know. So, when are you off? First train after lunch. Doesn't leave much time for beating about the bush, then, does it? No. So I suggest you stop doing it. <laughs> it's just that I'm a terrible man for beating around the bush as a rule. Well, you could have fooled me. Uh, that's why I do it. Well, some of the time. Most of the time, it just comes naturally. You spoke to a lady here about Lorna Seaton, didn't you? Is that any of your business? Oh, no, bear with me, please. I think it is. She wasn't very complimentary about Lorna, was she? She was informative. <laughs> oh, Maggie's always informative. It's uh, just that her information has a way of being, well, uh, inaccurate. You could go so far as to call it lying if you had been uncharitable. She seemed perfectly sincere to me. Oh, she would do. Oh, it, it's not that Maggie means to tell fibs. It's just, well, she loves to create a wee sensation when she can. And, and she likely just gets carried away with herself, if you see what I mean. I see what you mean. But what she told me fitted in perfectly well with what I knew already. Knew, Mr. Coffin? That my ex-wife was living with an alcoholic. But... Well, there's nothing wrong with your facts, Mr. Cochrane. It's just your interpretation of them that's all wrong. Indeed. Well, well, for one thing, they are not living together in the way you think. And for another, Ken is not what you mean by an alcoholic. He's an alcoholic who doesn't drink. I take it you're a friend of theirs. I'm proud to think so. so naturally, you like to speak well of them. <laughs> well, you could say that. And I'm supposed to take your word against that of a disinterested witness. <laughs> oh, but Maggie is never disinterested, Mr. Cochran. No. She is the biggest natural troublemaker since Adolf Hitler. I wonder if you would dare to say that to her face. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that I would be, Mr. Cochran. <laughs> you see, she's my wife. Here, is that a wee mark I see there, Mother? Well, if you don't know, it must be a guy wee mark. Well, do you think you could get it off before tonight? Get it off? I can't even see it. It's there. Where? Oh, I don't know, but it was there a minute ago. Well, either it's gone away in its own, or you've got spots in front of your eyes. There it is, quite plain. Oh, nobody will ever notice that. I noticed it. Oh, honestly, do. You're like a wee lassie going to her first dance. But I can't go and meet Katrina looking scruffy. I know, you're scruffy most of the time anyway. First impressions, Mother. Aye, but this won't be a first impression. You said that she knew you. Aye, well, that's right, so she does. Well, then her first impression of you must have been that you're scruffy. That would be in my working clothes. I want her to see that I'm not always scruffy. You know, you're so different from your father. 
He was a fine figure of a man. He looked good in anything. It's a pity, then, that I had the bad luck to take after you. Ken, sorry. Well, they've been at the Pete again. Then we've got them. No. Oh, come on, they must have left a van behind. It didn't work, Brian. It had to work. Somebody lifted the boards and they drove the van up the path. But they couldn't be seen at night. You couldn't see them in broad daylight. I know. And it was when there was nobody on watch. So, it's got to be... Yeah, sweaters. I don't like it without sweaters. Couldn't one of you have told somebody on the outside? Yes, they did. They knew what they were doing. You're the only one left I can trust, Brian. I mean, what about Craig and Eddie? Ah, well, I suppose they've got to be our chief suspects. Why would Peter Craig get involved in something like that? <sighs> money. When you've got a family and little or no work. Eddie's been saying he needs money since ever Sheila Lamont got pregnant. Ah, oh, look, don't let's prejudge anybody. I mean, we could wind up being as wrong about Eddie and Craig as Marion's father is about Ken. What? Come on, Brian. What's that about? <sighs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. Well, you've started. You might as well finish. Look, it's not really any of our business, Ken. Well, maybe not, but you seem to know more about it than I do. Well, you know that Marion is going to Saudi with her father. Yeah, well, Lorna told me. But what... Because of me. In a way, you can understand it. I mean, knowing the facts and knowing the situation are two different things. The facts being that Lorna's living with an alcoholic. Does Lorna know this? She never wanted you to find out. She's not going to get away with it. Ken, there is nothing you can do. Well, I'm damned if I'm going to let be the cause of Lorna losing her daughter. I'll see you. Ken, where are you going? To sort out Mr. God Almighty Cochran. Ken! <sighs> Me and my big mouth. I heard you were going to go without seeing me. I'd have written. Maybe I'd have answered. I thought it would hurt too much, I suppose. Marion, if you hadn't come... My father persuaded me. Oh. It seems like he can persuade you to do just about anything. That's not fair Isn't to me. Isn't it? You're giving up college against your will. You're leaving all your friends and going abroad against your will. Do you not realize you've got a choice in this? I've made my choice, Jimmy. If I stay, my father will stay with me. And he'll have no job and he'll be in breach of contract. And if you go, how many contracts will you be in breach of? Well, now. I've seen the mayor for you, and she's managed to get herself colic and eczema at the same time. Ah, but there's no connection between the symptoms, and I've told Geddes what to do about it. Oh, thanks, Robert. You know, I feel more and more guilty about not giving the horses the attention they need. But since Fiona's been ill... Ah, uh, it's not been good for them. They get very attached to people. Oh, I know. I'm very attached to them. <sighs> Robert, you know old John Campbell quite well, don't you? I did when we were younger, when I was trying my hand as a runner at the games for the fun of it. He used to give me fatherly advice. Why do you ask? Well, I had a call from him this morning insisting on coming up here to pay his rent, to me personally. Well, I told him it was Saturday after all, there's no hurry, but oh, he said there was and hung up. Do you think he might be beginning to wander a little? I don't know about that. But one thing I am sure of, and so is Dr. Wallace. His eyesight's going pretty fast. He'll soon be blind, Mrs. Cunningham. Does he know? He's been told. But uh, I don't think he believes it. I bet that's him now. Well, do come in. Hello, Jock. Oh, it's you, is it? There's your rent. I want a receipt for it. Now, there was really no need to come all this way. There was no hurry for the rent. If you say so. Can I have my receipt? Well, you know, Mr. Campbell, the office is closed. Now, 
Would it be all right if I send it down on Monday? Aye, but see that it's back dated to today. Well, if that's what you want. It's what I want. Won't you sit down? Mr. Campbell, I hear that you've been having some trouble with your eyes. What if I have? Well, maybe there's some way that I can help. By uh, getting me put into a home. Well, I could try if that's what you want. It's not what I want, but it's what you want, isn't it? And, and it's what he wants. Well, I'll see you all far enough before I let you put me out of my house and into a home. I'll tell you that. Mr. Campbell. I'll be all right. Let him go, Mrs. Cunningham. There's no talking to him in that mood. I, I didn't want to say it before, but he's been given the impression that you and I and Sandy Wallace are plotting to throw him out of his house so that you can sell it to me. I'd like a word with you. Mr. Cole. Oh, yes. You know, I've met some pretty awful people in my time. I can believe that. Well, me being an alcoholic, you mean? Exactly. Yeah, well, I've met the scum of the my time, but you're something else. Keep your voice down, please. Look, you worried about what we've seen in public. Huh. You had to get involved with a woman when your wife was pregnant. And then when your wife broke down, you deserted her and took her daughter away. Lorna wasn't fit to have custody. Oh, and whose fault was that? Why'd she you feel you're so fit? And I brought her up well. Oh, ah, sure, she's a great kid. That's why I couldn't believe her anything else but a hypocrite. I make no claim to having been a saint, Calder. But I am concerned about my daughter's welfare. Oh, so that's what you call taking Marion away from her mother. Concerned for her welfare. You know Marion knows how you and Lorna both split up. But Lorna told her. I expect she was trying to turn Marion against me. If that had been true, Marion wouldn't be leaving with you today. I, I'd just like to know how you figure that taking Marion away from her studies, from her friends, from Jimmy, from her mother, is concerned for her welfare. I, I hope when Marion grows up and realises the mess you've made of her life that she'll forgive you because I wouldn't and I won't. I think we should talk about this somewhere else. Oh, man to man, you mean? Man to man, I wouldn't spit in you. Uncle Ken. Dad, I've got something to tell you. I'm taking the next train back to Glasgow, but I'm not going with you when you go back to Saudi. How do I look, Mother? All dressed up like a dish of fish. Hmm. Oh, you look fine, son. I, I know you're worried, Mother. But I'm only going to have a meal with Katrina, that's all. And you've got us married off already. Well, it would be different if she was somebody we know. Somebody like Big Morag, you mean? Let me tell you, Mother, I feel as if I'd known Katrina longer and better than I know Morag. And I haven't even met her yet. Well, I just hope you won't be too disappointed. Oh, I'll not be disappointed. You'll see. We'll get on like a house on fire. Yeah, well, see, you don't get your fingers burnt. Hmm? Oh, never mind. Just you enjoy yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm sure to do that, Mother. Well, away you go, then. <sighs> oh, it's typical. She lets us in ten minutes ago, and then she keeps us waiting. Deliberately. It's a war of nerves. Oh, not affect my nerves, I tell you that. <laughs> Mr. Craig, we must be very calm when we talk to Mrs. Cunningham. Calm? Oh, I'll be calm, all right. It's not that our moral indignation isn't fully justified, but this requires delicate handling. So I suggest you let me do the talking. All right. Just so long as you remember there's a difference between being delicate and pussyfooting about. 
I hope you're not implying that I would be afraid to put our case in the most direct terms to Mrs Cunningham. That's exactly what I'm implying. Well, she's got away with too many things already because we haven't been tough enough with her in the past. When you say we, I take it you are, including yourself. Of course I am. I'd be a lot tougher if the rest of you hadn't been so eager to handle things delicately. Ah, Mrs Cunningham. Now then. Please. Sit, Barra. Good girl. I take it you represent the community council. Well, not exactly. Some of them were scared to support us. But uh, I think I can say with truth that we do represent the view of the village. The right-thinking villagers, at least. And may I know what it is that the right-thinking villagers think? Of course, of course, Mrs Cunningham. We've uh, brought a petition on their behalf. Thank you. And what exactly has given the people who signed this the idea that I might be thinking of making Mr. Campbell give up his cottage? Well, if you'll peruse the document again, Mrs. Cunningham, you'll see that nowhere does it say in so many words that you are thinking of doing it. It merely says that should you be considering... It's more than just a rumour, though. The source of our information is reliable and very well informed. Mm -hmm. I think I am as well informed as anyone about my own intentions, Mr. Craig, and I can assure you that I have no intention of, of trying to make Mr. Campbell give up his home. Oh, well, that's as maybe. But we've let you know that if you do, there'll be plenty of opposition to it. I suppose you know that Mr. Campbell has heard this rumour. <clears throat> we're, uh, we're well aware of that, Mrs. Cunningham. You'll be aware, too, then, of the, the pain, the worry that it's caused. That's us. exactly why we decided something has got to be done about it. I won't ask who your well-informed source is, but I think whoever started this rumour is less to blame than the people who spread it and caused this unnecessary suffering to old John Campbell. You're not suggesting that we've... That's exactly what I'm suggesting, Mr Murdoch. Did you really think that taking round this petition to be signed before you checked your facts wouldn't spread the lie? Any suffering it has caused is directly attributable to all of you. I hope you'll remember that. And now, good night. Mrs. Cunningham, good night, Chairman Mr. Of the Murdoch. Mrs. Mack, oh. Mr. Craig. I'm sure you can find your own way out. What are you doing here? I might ask you the same. You know very well. How would I? Well, because my mother will have told you the way she tells you everything about me. You're here to spy on me, aren't you? Oh, I've got better things to do in my time than spying the likes of you, Dougal Larkin. Oh, have you now? And what would that be? I'm here to meet a gentleman. And what gentleman will be wanting to meet you here? Well, you did once for a start. Sure. Oh, I suppose it's Inverdarroch. None of your business. Anyway, you've got no right to be jealous. Jealous? Me jealous of you and Inverdarroch? You're welcome to him. I hope you'll be very happy. Is he away? Aye. I've brought Jessie Mancar's goats. Good. Now, are you sure you still want them? Well, would I have asked you to fetch them up here if I didn't? I don't know what Dougal will say when he sees them. Oh. He's not going to see them until I'm good and ready. When he tells me that he's bringing his Katrina up here, I'll tell him I've got three nanny goats already. Well, supposing he doesn't? I mean, they might not like each other. They might hate each other. Oh, I don't think there's much fear of that. She's after him in earnest, you know. And he's besotted with her already, more's the pity. I know he looked very nice when he went out. Not exactly like his father, a wee bit more like his Uncle Willie, and he wasn't the best looking in the family. Still... He looked very nice. <gasps> Good heavens, Bob! Look that. Would you like to order now, sir? Oh, no, not yet. Uh, I'm waiting for a lady. Would you like to order now, madam? Uh, no, thanks. I'm waiting for a gentleman. Taking you for a meal, is he? <laughs> Getting a bit of style is Inverdarroch. Well, he certainly had plenty of style the last time he took me. 
which is more than I can say for some. That's not what you said at the time. I just didn't want you to feel you suffered by comparison. I didn't. You did. Oh, hello, Dougal. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Mr. Watson. All right. Hello, Mr. Watson. You'll forgive me for asking, but why are you sitting over here and Morag sitting over there? Well, I don't know what she's doing here at all. Have you two had a lover's quarrel, then? I wouldn't demean myself by quarrelling with him. Then why do you keep doing it? Look, look don't you go, go getting the idea that, that she's with me. No, I am waiting for a lady, and that's not a title that she qualifies for. Oh, you'll forgive me for contradicting you there, Dougal, but I think she does. Ah, but then you're a gentleman, Mr Watson. There's more than I can say for him. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that, Morag. I mean, a, a man can be a rough diamond and still be one of nature's gentlemen. <gasps> Hello, Mr. Watson. Are you oh. dining with us tonight? Aye, aye, if you've good room for me. Oh, your table will be ready whenever you want it. Will I bring you a menu? Oh, no, I'll just order at the table as right. usual. Sure. Fine, well, I'll see you two in there, then. <laughs> I don't suppose... No! no. <sighs> Doesn't look as if he's going to turn up, does it? What about your lady friend? Oh, it's different with women. You never expect them to be on time. Oh, I'm not worried. Katrina's not the sort to stand a man up. No, she certainly is not. Especially a man that's going to stand a dinner at the Ochtan. Oh, I hope she's not ill or anything. She's not the sort that gets ill. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. A crofter's wife has to be healthy. I think I'd better telephone her. Do you know her phone number? No. No, I don't, actually. Do you? She's not on the phone. Oh, well, I wouldn't get her anyway. She'll probably be on her way here. She isn't. How do you know that? She's here already. Surely that's not her. Why don't you ask her? That's not her. But there isn't any other woman here. Yes, there is. And my middle name is Katrina. Oh, where you go and don't be daft. You could never write letters like that. Oh, oh, you almost had me believing you there, eh? Oh, oh. My letters. That's right. Oh. 